welcome to Random Gaming Talk, it's Entertainment Talks podcast for video games. I'm your host Matthew, joining me today, my co-host is Robert. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, how are you doing today? Doing alright, doing good, yep. Uh, what have you been playing in the last week or so? Uh, mostly I've been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, we had a bit of a discussion over the weekend on that. I know you're done kind of with the series. Mm-hmm. I haven't played any of this current story arc, this being, you know, Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. Right. So I actually had to watch a YouTube video to catch up on the non in the animus plot lines. Okay. And figure out what the hell was going on. Um, so far, I don't hate it. It's definitely, you know, I wouldn't call it like the old school Assassin's Creed games, like um, the one and two that I played. Uh, they're definitely sticking with this set up you know for open world you know exploration kind of a thing mm-hmm. um i mean you knew that going in i'm not shocked that you didn't like it i'm just shocked that you stuck with it but i guess with the rental service it's not like you were risking anything yeah i just posted it back <laughs> so yeah uh yeah like robert said i'm i'm done with assassin's creed i'm sort of in a position where i know that i need to be done and sort of cleanse myself of the franchise that being said i am going to watch the live action TV show whenever that happens the the Netflix one that's coming up that we talked about a few weeks ago uh, just just the the video game side of things I'm I'm kind of done with it uh, and what I mean by that and why I'm saying that is I I'm just tired of what Assassin's Creed has become and what I feel like it's become and how they've pretty much abandoned the original idea now. A lot of people have been saying with the last two games, Origins and Odyssey, uh, the the two that you mentioned, that they kind of didn't really... There wasn't really an Assassin's Creed. You know, the game's called Assassin's Creed. It should have an Assassin's Creed. Um, With this one, they do kind of bring that back a little bit more, and that was fine and stuff. Uh, Just kind of for notes and whatever, I'd played about... I think it was five or six hours of the game. Then I went and checked out some reviews, and... um, kind of just decided from there it's just that when i look at what assassin's creed used to be this story about desmond and altair and Ezio and his ancestors <coughs> excuse me his ancestors and the fight against the templars templars rather um the story's just changed far too much uh to, to me and it's not it's not heading towards its original actual goal now you could argue that at the end of desmond's story they did kind of conclude that, but they sort of... They they concluded his part of it, but they didn't really conclude the story. That story now goes through uh, Lila, who's the protagonist of Origins, Odyssey, and uh, and Valhalla. Uh, in certain games, I haven't even had like a modern-day um, protagonist and, and, and stuff. But it, it just feels to me like they've gotten to a point where it's like, okay, let's really, really minimise the... Uh, modern day stuff let's cut that down a lot and then for the ancestor storyline which is basically the main thread of the game now let's just have um kind of reskin it every year and to me it's kind of become a cheap kind of b tier the witcher because as i was kind of playing this game and and you know uh, the combat is is fine and whatever but it's trying too much to be a witcher type rpg as opposed to sticking to what it actually used to be um now you know it's up to the the directors and the writers and whatever about what story they want to tell i'm not arguing against that it's just that they've changed the story so much as to what it used to be and its actual end game kind of goal i i don't even know what the end game of assassin's creed is now and uh, it's interesting because i saw an article this week i didn't actually read it i probably should have um said that it's time for assassin's creed to end i think it's just time to end the current story of Assassin's Creed in some way. I don't know what you even do with that now because you've kind of changed it so much. And then just, I don't know, I mean, like you, you're going to keep getting Assassin's Creed games because they're too um, popular and they make too much money for for, for Ubisoft. Um, whether you just reboot the thing after that or I, I don't really know where, where you, you go with it. And that's, that's kind of one of the issues I had is like, okay, even if this game doesn't work out for me, okay, what about the next one and the, the one after that? But I just I'm so uncertain about where they're gonna go with the future of Assassin's Creed that I'm just like okay I don't want to invest in it and uh, it's, it's kind of sad actually because I've been playing these games since what 2007 2008 or something 
Uh, when it, whenever the first one came out, loved the first few games. Really liked what they did with Ezio, Altair, and Desmond. The whole story that was that was brilliant. That was the golden era to me of Assassin's Creed. Now I do think that the revamped gameplay that they've created in um, Origins was some of the best gameplay they've done for Assassin's Creed. But it's just the story. They've changed it so much to where I'm just I'm not invested in it anymore. Um, so where, where do you kind of stand on and all that and everything? Well. I like I don't really have a dog in the fight. I mean, I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game right. uh since Black Flag and even that I barely got into it. Um I just wasn't interested in the pirate theme. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm like I said I'm way far behind. I think 2 was the last one I actually would consider as finished. I know I finished the storyline of 2. I honestly don't even remember if I finished the storyline of 1 or not. I'd never played 3. Mhm. So um yeah, like I said, I don't really have a dog in this fight. What I did talk to you offline was that I'm kind of surprised you didn't like Ghosts of Tsushima more than you did because it's kind of half old school Assassin's Creed and half Sly Cooper. Mm. If it if it helps, I like Ghosts of Tsushima a lot more than Assassin's Creed. Well, uh, you so. you gave it five hours and and you know said tap mm-hmm. out. Well, you know, the, the, that's not the the recent Assassin's Creed kind of era the, yeah. the post desmond kind of era i yeah. think ghost of tsushima is 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 better than that um yeah but again still not the hardest bar to get over <laughs> yeah yeah i guess so um but yeah it's just i i kind of just came to this realization <clears throat> that once they got into the post desmond story i was like oh they'll continue the story in some interesting way game after game after game after game they didn't do it and then i just had the realization <clears throat> excuse me in this game of like they're, they're never gonna do that are they like they're never gonna go properly back to that story and conclude it in a satisfying way i don't think you can conclude that story in a satisf- satisfying way because you kind of butchered the the original idea and um i'm sure that there was an enemy character uh, i think his name was victor or something one of the original villains from from the first game and I, I I was trying to think about like okay where is all the characters who's who's alive who's dead from the original story and some of them I couldn't even like think of where they were and that just kind of, you know it's been several games since we've seen some of them or some of them have died and it's just kind of been a bit dispersed like it's just it's just been a bit all over the place so um but yeah I'm gonna move on to other games and uh, watch the TV show when it comes out and and that sort of thing so. Yeah, because I used to be a person that, you know, I would finish every Assassin's Creed game and see where the story went, but uh, I know that I need to kind of pull myself away from it, because the answers that I think I should be getting from the story, I just don't trust them to actually do that now, so we, sh- we shall see. Um, but speaking of Ghost of, Shis- uh, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, I am looking forward to the second one, whenever that does come out, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it, that'll be a good three, four years. Yeah, but... yeah, because I know they haven't announced it, but come on there's going to be a ghost of Tsushima too well they are uh, actively hiring for the position so yeah. if you go on the developers uh a career site you can see they're they're very very specifically hiring for what's clearly going to be a sequel to the game well maybe not even not a direct sequel but a second in the series right another piece or whatever mm-hmm. so um yeah other than that other than kind of ditching assassin's creed i've been playing um walking dead uh the onslaught game vr game uh, kind of finished it and everything, and yeah, it ends. Just, just this is more kind of a warning than a spoiler. I'm not gonna say what happens in the story, but it basically leaves you on a massive cliffhanger. Um, and you kind of get some post-game hints as to what's happened, but not a direct kind of answer. Um, basically, the story that they build up to in looking for this person, you kind of get a cliffhanger a result to that. Um. I think that the game's in this position where it's a, it's a very good game and all that. Like the actual gameplay itself is pretty good. Walking part, walking around Alexandria or a limited kind of part of it was pretty good. Uh, the shooting was great. The shooting range was really good. The way you can customize weapons was great. The scavenger runs were hit and miss depending on the actual area that you went to. Some of them were just a bit too long and some of them were actually a bit too short as well. Um, some of them are more sort of run and gun, like you've really got very limited time. And then others kind of give you sort of too much time with too many sort of zombies and stuff but uh yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing if they if they do another game in this in this type of uh, uh format that they've been doing um with with the same mechanics and stuff i still haven't looked up if it's the same developer for onslaught and saints and sinners i'm pretty sure they're well they're, they're just so close in terms of 
the the game mechanics that it feels like it's the same developer but i don't know that for sure i haven't looked it up um but i'm i'm very interested to see if they're going to do another game um i think there's certainly a lot of potential with uh with what they can do basically walking dead um onslaught vr focuses more on the characters like the uh, rick michonne carol and daryl the tv versions of those characters uh, of course daryl isn't in the comics anyway but uh, the tv versions of the other three it has them in there uh, Saints and Sinners is much more about, you know, there is a story there, but it's much more about negotiating and um, really just sort of survival and stuff. And there's no um, Walking Dead actual characters in there and that sort of thing. Uh, but I've switched back to playing Saints and, <coughs> excuse me, Saints and Sinners. I'm going to do a uh, fresh playthrough because I got basically a bit stuck. I got sort of too far into the game because basically with Saints and Sinners as well... Um, the further along you go in the story, so like when you go to sleep and then wake up and stuff, the supplies get less and the zombies get more. And I just got to a kind of breaking point in the game where I was too far in, in terms of the amount of time that has passed, and I had too little supplies where I just couldn't really feel like, I didn't really feel like I could progress. So I'm going to just sort of start again. And uh, I know what to do in the story and stuff, so it's not going to be like I'm, I'm stuck. I just need to be a bit more careful with supplies and things. Um... So yeah, that's the next kind of thing I'm going to be playing. I'm still waiting for uh, Watch Dogs Legion to be sent to me. I did have an email on Saturday. It's now Wednesday. We're going to go into Thursday, obviously. Uh, tomorrow. Um, I'm still waiting for that to actually arrive. It got sent on Saturday, but uh, I haven't actually received it yet. I did also get um, sent, I think it was yesterday, the Super Mario 3D All-Stars thing. Where they mm-hmm. you remember that one where they ported a bunch of games to to Switch? Um, there's mm-hmm. one of them that it doesn't include. I think it's 3D Worlds, but I can rent that separately, so I can still play all those games. Uh, so I'm went, I'm waiting to uh, receive those as well. Um, played a little bit of Call of Duty, not too much. I've been mainly trying to get through Walking Dead and stuff, and uh, FIFA and and some other things as well. So that's pretty much everything I've been playing. Uh, but let's move into some housekeeping. We'll see you for that in a second. Hi there and thanks very much for listening. Today I'm here to tell you about our two different affiliate links. The first of which is our Amazon affiliate link. That's where you can shop on Amazon. We can get a small cut of what you spend but it won't cost you anything extra. So whether you're getting a gift for somebody else or treating yourself or maybe both depending on the occasion we can get a small cut of what you spend but it won't cost you extra. You can find the link to our Amazon affiliate link in your show notes. The second affiliate link for today is our Kualu affiliate link. If you want to get started with a website and a domain name of your choice, you can simply sign up with Kualu using the link in the show notes. They also have a live chat support system that's in the bottom right hand corner as well. So if you need help with getting set up, Kualu will be able to help you with that as well. The links for both of these can be found in your show notes for Kualu and the Amazon affiliate link. If you would like to get the ad-free versions of Entertainment Talks podcast and support us along the way, you can simply sign up over on our Patreon page. You can sign up either as a creator or as a patron. There's no difference there for the time being. And you can get your ad-free podcasts over there. It's a great way to support us on Entertainment Talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad-free podcasts. You can also support Entertainment Talk on Patreon at the $3 level tier. This gets you a chance to request a review from us of your favourite TV show or film. But it's one per month. So one TV show or film review per month. It's up to you which one you want to choose. We will watch a few episodes of the TV show that you choose. Or of course if it's a film we'll just watch that film and we will review that for you on that month and then when it gets to the next month you can request a new TV show or a film review of your choice that's three dollar level tier that does also of course include your ad free podcasts for the month as well thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the show all right recently on entertainment talk let me scroll down so I can read off my own website uh we did the walking dead podcast today season one episode seven uh that's for the walking dead war beyond that is this week's episode as well uh we are only three episodes away from the season finale that'll be episode 10 and we're going to be continuing that as that goes along uh fear the walking dead's also still continuing that's up to season six episode six the mid-season finale season six episode seven which is an odd number to finish the mid-season finale for uh that's still continuing the mid-season finale is going to be next week so look out for my podcasts 
on those Let's Play Sundays episode. This is for Fall Guys. This isn't the one that I did with Robert. This is the solo uh, one that I did. The one that I'm doing with Robert will be coming out on Sunday. So if you want to check that out, you can check those out as well. Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Discovery, sorry, is still continuing. Season three, episode five, that will continue on Fridays. Uh, returned to Breaking Bad with the Becoming Heisenberg podcast. This was not for an episode. This was for our season one feedback because we scheduled the podcast. And didn't have feedback in real time. Because nobody knew that we were doing the podcast. Uh, me and David got, gathered up all the feedback from season 1 of Breaking Bad. For the 7 episodes of the first season. And uh, read out your comments, thoughts, feelings, questions. All that sort of thing. And did the uh, the podcast on that. And we'll be back at some point in 2021. To talk about season 2. It's up to us when we come back. Because the show is obviously already out. But uh, you can check that out if you like Breaking Bad. And if you've not seen Breaking Bad. I highly recommend that you do so. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, last week on Gaming Talk, we talked about the Avengers game losing in lots of different ways. Uh, Mass Effect Trilogy remastered due for spring 2021. We'll see if that sticks or not. Uh, and some interesting additions to Game Pass. And also did my Don't Skip review for Enola Holmes, the uh, film based off of Sherlock Holmes' sister. Enola Holmes, played by Millie Bobby Brown, and Sherlock Holmes is played by Henry Cavill in that particular film. And that's what we've been doing on entertainmenttalk.org and on podcast platforms. Let's get into some news. Alright, uh, shall I go first? Do you go first? I can't remember who goes first, usually. We kind of flip-flop it back and forth. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and go first this time. Cool. Alright, I've got the game awards and, and things as well to get to. Um, actually, you know what? I'll put that at, I've put that at the bottom of my notes, but I'll shift it up to the top. It's in the title of the episode as well, and uh, it's the new pressing piece of news, I suppose. Uh, so the game awards were announced today. It's going to be, is it December 10th? 12th? 12th, I think, isn't it? Uh, 10th. 10th. Okay, yeah. Uh, the December 10th for the Game Awards, and here are the nominees. We'll start off with, I'm just scrolling down on the Game Awards website, so whichever awards come up first, that's the one that I'm going to read first. Uh, so the actual Game of the Year one is the one that's first. Uh, Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, whoops, I've scrolled too fast, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Hades, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and... The Last of Us Part 2. Um, I don't need to explain which one I'm going to be voting for, but how about yourself, Robert? Ghost of Tsushima, probably? Uh, yeah, I don't even remember Hades. Um, it's quite new, I think. I think. I like... don't... I mean, it came out in September. Um, okay. And this was... Uh... I haven't seen anything from it, so I don't really know much mm -hmm. about it. I know that a lot of people have been sort of raving about it and it's been well it, it was on uh early access on pc back in 2018 i think that's why it's uh so weird that you don't remember most people don't remember it because uh -huh. i'd never even heard of it uh i don't really get what a remake is doing on there if i had to disagree with anyone on the list it would probably be that one i completely forgot that doom eternal came out this year i did as I well just, yeah yeah yeah, that was um, was that like a February game or March or something? March, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, sort of spring period. Everyone kind of forgets about those games because <laughs> uh, they just come out so early. Um, yeah, I'm obviously going to go for Last of Us Part Two. Um, and you can actually, the public can actually vote on these, can't they? Because it says sign in to vote, which I'll be doing uh, probably tomorrow. Um, but would you go with uh, Ghost of Tsushima? I mean, that's. I mean, I've played some Animal Crossings, and I get why it's on the list. Out of all of them, mm -hmm. I would probably pick uh, Ghost. Cool. I'm trying to see which ones we were talking about early. Like Valhalla, I guess, was uh, too late technically for that. Um, same with probably uh, Miles Morales. Hmm, um, maybe. We talked possibly of Gears Tactics since the PC came out in April and the uh, console port came out a couple weeks ago. Um I wouldn't really consider it, but I could understand it being, you know, a first party, essentially franchise, you know, console PC exclusive that, mm -hmm. you know, it might make the list. But yeah, um, you've got three first party, not first party, three um, PlayStation exclusives on there. You've got Last of Us 2, Naughty Dog, 
uh, Ghost from uh, Sucker Punch, and then Final Fantasy VII, which is a third party or a second party exclusive. It's a timed exclusive. It's timed coming exclusive. on Xbox at some point. Uh, yeah, Final Fantasy VII remake from um, the Squeenix, Square Enix. Um, interesting. I think that I never really seen. I think maybe PlayStation's had two exclusives on the list before, possibly because um, they had what Spider Man and God of War were probably nominated or. Uh, no, Horizon was 2017. That wouldn't have been the same year. Because 20- 2018 was Spider-Man, God of War, Red Dead, wasn't it? I think. Obviously, Red Dead's third party. Um, but I'm sure Spider-Man and God of War were nominated in the same year. And those are actually th- first party exclusives. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, best game direction, you've got... Is there any difference in the games here? Yeah, you've got uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima... Hades, uh, Half-Life Alex, and then Last of Us Part 2. I'm going to go with Last of Us Part 2 again. Um, how about you for that? Uh, Ghost honestly, here, so. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, Ghost is the only one I've played. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm not hating on the Last of Us 2 franchise. I just, it never, the first one never really clicked with me, so I've never played the mm-hmm. second. So yeah, I get why it's in the it, conversation so. again, but it's just, if I haven't played it, it's kind of hard for me to comment on it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you haven't experienced it, so that makes sense. Uh, oops, I've clicked on the wrong thing. This next one is best narrative. Uh, you've got 13 Sentinels, which I've never actually heard of before. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Last of Us Part Two. I'm going to go with the same thing again. Um... And We're noticing a, a trend here. A lot yeah. of the same games are getting... and that, That's the one thing that's always annoyed me and why I don't super, super care about uh, awards is that it's almost always the same. Right, the same kind of... Same games in similar categories. I yeah, think I that, mean, like... I think just maybe there's unlike, too many categories that are quite right similar. Now. Maybe. Well, it's not even so many that there's too many categories with uh, there's, that are similar. There's too many of the same games in different categories. Like I'm, I'm right. scrolling through the list right now, and Final Fantasy VII, Ghost, and Last of Us Two are all in art direction, score and music, audio design, performance. Um, yeah, so that's like they're in everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, art direction: Final Fantasy VII, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, or in the Will of the Wisps. Interesting bit of a change there, and Last of Us Part Two. While I very, very much appreciate the visual attempts, now I'm not one who necessarily um, is bothered about visuals or art or necessarily. I've spoken at length about that before. Um, I'm still going to go with Last of Us 2. I never did finish or in the Will of the Wisps. I need to probably do that before the end of the year just so I can kind of put it somewhere in my list. Uh, it's a brilliant game. It's just, I don't know, I didn't really finish it and stuff. Um, would you go? Yeah, I guess you'd go with maybe Ghost again because it's... Uh, mm-hmm. In there again. Uh, best score and music. Doom Eternal. Whoops. You can scroll accidentally really fast on this website. <laughs> Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, Ori, Last of Us Part Two. Is that the exact same nominations? Pretty much, yeah. A yeah, lot of it's copy-pasted. Yeah, a lot of got Last of Us again. Best audio design. Half-Life Alex is in here instead. Resident Evil 3 is in here. Uh, and Last of Us Part Two. So pretty much the same games again, but with Resident Evil 3... And um, Half Life as well. Uh, again, I would go with Last of Us. I did like the creepy atmosphere stuff um, for Resident Evil Three. You could—it's one of them horror games where you can You always—it always sounds like there's something behind you, and there and there isn't, and that's kind of a good um, effect as well. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima did have good sound design. Half Life Alex, I've not played. Doom Eternal is a good one for. Um, audio design because you've got sort of like all the crunching weapons and you know explosive stuff and, and all that sort of thing I, I didn't play that much of Doom Eternal uh, Doom's just not really a game that's for me necessarily uh, so there's those ones uh, best performance bit of a different category uh, Ashley Johnson as Ellie Last of Us Part 2 Laura Bailey as Abby uh, Last of Us Part 2 um, I can't say that guy's name Jin from uh, Ghost of Tsushima uh, Logan as uh, Logan Cunningham as Hades for Hades itself. No, I don't want to sign in. Um, and then Nadji 
uh, as Miles Morales, who is obviously in the, the first Spider-Man game, but this is for uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, as much as I really, really liked Ashley Johnson and Laura Bailey's performances in Last of Us Part Two, I think everybody does a good job um, in that game, or a fantastic job in that game. Now, in 2013, Ashley Johnson did win, I think it was in the BAFTAs, I don't know if it was in the actual Game Awards, but I think it was in the BAFTAs or something. Uh, she won Best Voice Actress. Just maybe for that, I'd like to possibly see Laura Bailey as Abby win. Now, either of them would be still a win for me, you know, it's still the you know Last of Us 2 and stuff. How about you? What would you like to go with? Uh, I don't know. I mean, i got to be honest with you, it's usually like the same six people doing all the voice acting jobs. Mm -hmm. I'd honestly be interested in having them get new talent for some of these two roles. Hmm, yeah. I guess so. I mean, with, you know, Ashley Johnson, she's returning. Uh, some of them are returning for Last of Us, but there are some new people in there, like Laura Bailey and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Uh, games for Impact. If Found. Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition. Spirit. Farah? I can't read today. Uh, Tell Me Why and Through the Darkest of Times. I've heard good things about Tell Me Why. I've not actually played any of these games, so I'd go with that just based on that as well. Um, any thoughts on that? Um, Impact game? Honestly, I don't know. None of it really strikes me as that much of an impact impact. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, best ongoing game? I'm going to go with Call of Duty anyway. you got the usual kind of nominations in there. But Call of Duty is the only one that I play. So I'll go with that. Indie? Mm -hmm. uh, indie, you've got Carrion? Uh, Full Guys? Carrion. Carrion, Full Guys, Hades... Splunky 2 and the ge the other game that I couldn't uh, pronounce the name Spirit of. Spiritfarer. Spiritfarer, that's it, yeah. Um, I'd probably go with Fall Guys here. Uh, how about you? Yeah, because that's the only one I can ever see remember constantly being on, on Twitch or any other streaming mm -hmm. platform. Yeah, so uh, best mobile game, I'm not going to do that. I don't think the nominees are actually that great for uh, best mobile game. The best one in there is probably, I don't even know, maybe Among Us, I th I think probably but uh yeah yeah uh best community support that's fine best vr ar i was really wondering if uh iron man vr was going to get nominated for anything and i didn't know that they had a vr ar nomination section and uh we've got dreams which is which isn't a vr game but it does have vr support it got recently added half-life alex iron man vr Star Wars Squadrons, and then Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. So I've played three games in here. Well, I've actually I've played Dreams as well, but I've not played it in VR. How about yourself? Um, I don't I, own anything VR, so... Okay, I'd go with uh, Iron Man. I think it's one of the most underrated games of the year, if not of the generation. It's, it's uh, a little bit sad that more people didn't play that game. So I think most people think that's some sort of like on-rail shooter or something, and it's... Far more than that, but uh, I like Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Um, how are you getting on with Star Wars Squadrons? I don't own it. Oh, I thought you did. I I was thinking about getting it, but I never got around to getting it. Okay, because I, mem I remember we had a conversation, because I played it, didn't I? I remember we had a conversation about it. I, th mm -hmm. I thought that you had it at some point, but uh, no, I go with um, Iron Man VR for that. Innovation and accessibility, I'd easily give this to... I mean, I'm going to give it to Last of Us 2 anyway, but the options that they put in that game were praised quite a lot by uh, some different people when that came out. But you've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Grounded, Hyper Dot, uh, Last of Us Part 2, Watch Dogs Legion. I don't know what Watch Dogs Legion does for... Um, uh, innovation and accessibility, I don't really know... Um, any thoughts on that? I think Last of Us Two's a winner there for me as well. So just give the. I don't know how they're qualifying that. So. I think that's for well accessibility is like, um, options that help you kind of get through a game. So things like subtitles and then um, I can't remember a lot of the other options, but it's basically to help sort of the, you know, people that find it difficult to play games to get through them and stuff with with different options. So. Uh, that's what that's for. Best action, Doom Eternal, Hades, Half-Life Alex, Neo 2. Did that come out this year? I guess it mm -hmm. did. I guess it did. Uh, Streets yeah. of Rage 4, which I heard some good things about. I would go... Um, Doom Eternal probably is best action game here. 
I think. Um, yeah. I, I heard endlessly good things about it. The part that I did play of Doom Eternal, I did really enjoy, but it's just, again, not a game for me. Uh, action. Yeah, I actually have played a lot. Uh, well, not a lot, but I have played some. Streets of Rage 4 is part of uh, Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. Mm-hmm. But more than likely, I'll see Doom winning this one just because it's a Doom game that plays like old school Doom game. You know, fast, frantic pace, lots of shooting, lots of mm-hmm. guns, lots of explodey, explodey bits. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, best action adventure. We've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Spider Man. So it was. It must have been elig- eligible for Game of the Year then, if it's mm-hmm. in here. Uh, or in the Will of the Wisps, Star Wars, Squadrons, and Last of Us Part 2. You all know what I'm going to go with. What would you go with out of that section? Ghost? Uh, Ghost. I can kind of see an argument for Fallen Order, but I think that's too slow paced of a game to really consider it action and adventure. Uh, Miles Morales is basically just DLC, and a lot of times DLC isn't qualified for Game of the Year. Hmm. The only one I think would probably would have been Blood and Wine for uh, Witcher 3, but that's just because that DLC was so massively <laughs> big. Yeah. It was practically a game in itself. Hmm. It was like a 15, 20 hour thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, best role playing game Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, Genshin Impact, Persona 5, Wasteland 3. And Yakuza Like a Dragon, I don't really have a stake in this race. So, uh, best fighting game... Um, You've got a bunch of nominations in there. I don't have any stakes in there either. Best family game, uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Or New, Hor- yeah, New Horizons. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Good to see it somewhere in here. Um, nope, and I've clicked on the thing to sign in. Let's click that off. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Four Guys Ultimate Knockouts. Um, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, Minecraft Dungeons, and Paper Mario The Origami King. I'm obviously going to go with Crash 4. Um, it's the only thing it's nominated in for anything, um, which is which is a bit of a shame. But uh, at least it's got the potential to win something. Um, what would you go with here? Well, the, the shocking thing, well, the not shocking thing on this category is half the category are Switch exclusives. Hmm. I'm kind of shocked that Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is in there because, one, that literally just came out like a week or so ago. That's when we were talking about where there's a remote-controlled car and then there's a camera yeah. on the front of the car and then yeah. you drive around around. Did you ever see any video of that? Um, No, I didn't see any proper video of it. Um, so I need, to, I need to look that up. I'm still very interested in getting it. So Yeah. Uh. Um. Animal Crossings would be my guess to win it. The, either that or Paper Mario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, I mean, a win for me would be Last of Us wins anything, uh, doesn't, well, Game of the Year would be amazing, but obviously it's got a lot of opportunities to win different things, Iron Man VR winning VR game would be great, and obviously Crash 4 winning, uh, family game, uh, the last category I'm gonna read out, because there's a bunch of eSports stuff, is, uh, content creator of the year, you've got Alana Pierce, Jay Ana Lopez, Nick Merrick's uh, Tin the ha- Tin the Tim the Tatman. Tim the Tatman. His name was all kind of jumbled together there. Um, and Valkyrie. Um, yeah, good to see Alana Pierce getting getting nominated for this. She's done a lot of really good work. Uh, lately as well. She's just uh signed on. Well, she's just gotten a new job to be a game writer at uh, Sony Santa Monica, the studio for God of War. So. Uh, yeah, big congratulations to her for that. She's been at like Rooster Teeth and IGN and she has her own YouTube channel and she's uh, got this, I think it's called Play, Watch, Listen, the games podcast that she does with like Troy Baker and stuff. So yeah, she's done a lot of good work um, lately. But uh, who would you choose out of that? Um, probably go with Tim the Tap Man. I mean, nothing against Alana, but uh, she hasn't been doing this that long and Tim's been on Twitch for like six, seven years. Mm-hmm. And this is just him starting to get a little bit of recognition. Yeah. So um, I'm just trying to pull up their accounts here about data at its oldest. All right. While you find that, I'm going to go and charge my phone because it's about to die. So. Okay. I'll be back in a sec. I am back. What were you going to read out? Oh, I was just getting the the basic bios. Uh, Timothy John Betar is Tim the Tatman. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been a Twitch streamer since 2012. 
Um, I pulled up Alana Pierce's YouTube page because that's mostly how she got started. Mm -hmm. And I can't honestly can't tell if she just didn't upload a lot or just had to take a lot of videos down because of the, a lot of the DMCA stuff that's been happening. But I'm like not seeing any kind of consistent um, upload schedule. I mean that's I mean that's all I can find. I mean that's all I can say. I mean I've heard of both, but honestly I would put someone who streams you know five six days a week on Twitch more of a content creator than someone that puts you know five six YouTube videos a year up every year. So, mm -hmm. but that's just personal opinion to me. Okay, cool. Uh, but that is your game awards for 2020. Um, good luck to everybody, and of course, I hope The Last of Us wins everything. Uh, so, so yeah, but uh, I mean, a big win for me would be you know, um, Alana winning, Crash winning. Um, don't really care if FIFA wins or Call of Duty necessarily, because there's going to be another one this year and next year. Um, they're already, they're literally already all new new games of of those, because there's uh, Black Ops Cold War, uh, Last of Us Two winning a lot of stuff. Game of the Year would be a big one. Um, and that would be that would be good for me. So, um, there we go. Let's move on to the next thing. Go back to the top of my notes. Uh, yeah, just a little conversation that we could maybe have. Uh, next gen is actually here now. Um, the PlayStation Five does get released in the UK tomorrow, so the nineteenth of November. I'm not going to be getting one because, as I discussed, I pretty much just sort of upgraded my PS4, got two new controllers, got a hard drive, which spaces. It's it's so nice to not have space as an issue. <laughs> Um, anymore, which is which has been great. So I'm uh, very very happy with that particular purchase. Um, so that's been good. Uh, and then like you know things like Spider Man, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Sackboy, they're all on PS4 anyway. So I'm just gonna play Spider Man on on the console that I already own. Uh, I'll probably look a bit more for a PS5. Well, first of all, when there's more in stock, which there really aren't at the moment, and uh, probably I don't know maybe maybe summer or the end of end of next year. Um, just try and keep my PS4 going and, and that sort of thing. Um, but how do you feel about, uh, yeah, next gen sort of being here? I know that over where you are that the PS5 is actually out, so. Uh, it is out. It's hard to get. It's it's out of stock in a lot of places. It pops up mm -hmm. like two or three randomly at, at one store or another store, and then it goes away really quick. Um, I don't know. I mean, when you don't have the console to test it, to play with it, to use it, and all you can go off of is um, other people's reaction. Uh, the the one consistently thing one consistent thing that I get is the people that do have it that do the unboxing uh, for the PS5 say even though they knew it was going to be big they didn't realize how big big actually was. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One streamer that I'm considering doing an interview with I got to suss out a couple more things. Um, I described the the size of it and the reaction just went like giant anime eyes of like holy crap it's really that big <laughs> yeah um but outside of that i mean it's just one of those things i'd like to be able to have my xbox series x but i'm not so desperate to get it that i'm going to be one of those people that pays three thousand dollars to a scalper to buy it oh no 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 don't want to be doing that so um, and shame to those people that are actually doing that, like buying a console for five hundred dollars and then selling it for a thousand. Um, it's uh, it's honestly especially... that's more of a shame of the people buying it. I mean, nobody's forcing them to buy that over infl mm -hmm. inflated price. It's especially bad at the moment, though. Because I mean, that's already a bad idea in general. But just the fact that at the moment, with the way that the world is, and there's a limited quantity of these things, and people really want them. You know, people are probably trying to get these things like for their kids or for their family for Christmas, and there's some scalper who's got like 15 of them on yeah. uh, eBay. I saw this po photo on Twitter the other day of this uh, scalper. He must have had like 20 of them because uh, he he took a photo of like a big um, stack of them that he had. He was like, "Hey, two, one." I think he said one grand for digital and two grand for the uh, one with the disc drive in. Um, mm -hmm. like message me if you're interested, and I'm like, pe people are trying to get these things like for their kids and or for themselves and and whatever. It's just a bad thing to do. But yeah, especially with the way the world is at the moment, you can't just kind of normally go on and buy one because there's just such a limited stock. Um, but yeah, just for me at yeah. the moment, both both with the Xbox Series X or S and the PS5, I just don't feel like I need one because the games that are coming out at the moment and games that are going to be coming out soon, so things like Cyberpunk and all that are going to be playable on the machines that I've already got. So I just don't feel they need necessarily to, to get them. I know there, there's things like Demon Souls, which I'm kind of curious about as well. And I know that, um, 
Oh, what's the other game? Like Astro's Playroom. I think, is that what it's called? No, Astro's... The, the, the new Astro game, I can't remember the exact name of it. Uh, I know those are only playable on PS5, but I can... I, I don't feel like I should buy a £500 or £450 console just to play those two games. That seems yeah. a little bit extra. Astro's Playroom is the game that comes with the PS5. Playroom, that's it. Yeah, because it was... Uh, Astrobot VR was the the VR game that uh, that they started off with, um, which I've heard very 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 good things about the new Playroom game and stuff. Uh, I played the VR one as well, so that's uh, that's cool. But uh, yeah, we're in a new era of the podcast, I suppose. Uh, the next gen consoles are either almost here or they're completely here. Um, so yeah, email us in, let, let us know if you've got them and if you've had trouble with them or if you enjoyed what you've got and that sort of thing or if you're trying to get one, uh, let us know your different uh, situations. Uh, let's move on from that uh, NBA, speaking of the PS5, NBA 2K21, the upcoming NBA game, the one that's already out. I'm not sure if it's actually out, but uh, it, it'll probably be out soon. It is 150 gigabytes on PlayStation 5, which is pretty big. Uh, just for reference, um, I have talked at length, of course, in the past about uh, how big Call of Duty is on my hard drive. That Granted, that's a PS4 game on a PS4 console, and this is a PS5 game on a PS5 console. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare on PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 4 version, is 182 gigs. Actually, I think it's a little bit bigger. About 182, 183. So NBA 2K21, which probably has a fair few game modes, but not like in the expanded sort of sense like you can, you can probably play different types of tournaments and career modes and whatever but uh call of duty which has got campaign multiplayer warzone and spec ops which no nobody plays spec ops um has got four game modes that are all quite big uh is uh only slightly bigger than nba 2k21 um what do you think of the size of this game <laughs> uh it doesn't really surprise me that much i mean they uh these games are big because they got to shoehorn so many uh, um, older characters from previous seasons to you know justify their endless DLCs. When you initially said 150, I was just assuming it was going to be 150 dollars after you buy all the DLC and purchase crap. I'm talking about uh, 150 gigs for the size of the game. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Is when you initially said 150, I thought that was like the full price once you buy all the <laughs> DLC. <laughs> no. No, um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big game on the PS5. So if you're planning to get that, which I am not, I don't think Robert is either, um, then you might want to either do what I did, get a new hard drive or an extended hard drive. Um, just in case I haven't explained it, I have got a um, ex, ex, expandable, not expandable, uh, external, that's the word I was looking for, a hard drive. I just plugged it in through USB. Um, it's very, very easy to set up, which was good. I basically just plugged it in, formatted it, that was done, and then I clicked on the games, moved them over, and that was that. So mm -hmm. uh, let's move on to uh, your most anticipated upcoming game, which has been delayed a few times. There were some delay rumors recently for Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, just, by the way, did you get the message from... Oh, no, you're getting it through Xbox, aren't you? There's been a message that went to, I think, everybody on PlayStation 4 about, like, the delay for the pre-order. Um, I yeah, I, you... I did get that on Xbox on uh, PlayStation Five, okay. which is why I knew it was an error because I've never even gone to that game's page. Right, right. on my PlayStation Four. Yeah, rather, some, some so people... I don't know why the hell I said five. Yeah, some people were very confused. Like, oh, I didn't, I didn't buy this game, but uh, it seems like it, that message went out to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Weirdly, uh, CD Projekt Red has confirmed the te December tenth date still stands. It's not confirmed that that's actually going to be the full release date. Uh, I still find this very strange because the game went gold and everything. Um, but they are still standing by that release date. There's also been... I'll put reports here. Uh, I don't know if this is confirmed or just rumours. That the game will apparently ship on two discs. Which kind of makes sense. Because even a game from two years ago, Red Dead Redemption 2, um, was shipped on, on two discs as well. So... Uh, yeah. We're getting... Obviously we got to that part of the generation. I remember when... Um, I think it was GTA 5 on Xbox 360. I remember when I got that, and that was that was the first ever two disc game that I got. Not a game that's played in two parts, but one where you install it with one disc and then play it with the other disc. Um, and I remember taking that out and being like, okay, this is like really weird. You put one game into install, one disc into install it, and then uh, another to actually play it. I remember as well with GTA 5 on the uh, Xbox 360. I had to because my 360 hard drive was full. I ended up getting like 
I think it was a USB stick. I plugged that into the Xbox and that had like 8 gig on it and it just it barely fit on the console. <laughs> so that was uh, an interesting situation. Um, but yeah, what do you think of these uh, two different pieces of news? Uh, well, I'm on my Amazon page, which is where I ordered the pre-ordered the Cyberpunk game, and it still shows as December 10th of the arrival date. And that rumor came out like four or five days ago. Mm-hmm. So if it was if, if it was going to change, it would have changed by now. Uh, the two disc thing does kind of confuse me a little bit, since um, all they'd have to do is just offload everything that isn't required for the installation, and then just put it as a download pack mm. online. I mean, it would take a bit longer, which for people on slower connections, that would really suck. But there's nothing more game breaking than be like being in an intense fight, and then you get to a cutscene. And it's like, please insert this too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe they could make it optional in the future. Um, as like, okay, if you've got better internet, you can get one disc, download the rest on the other part, and if you don't mind using two discs, you can do it that way, maybe. So. Um, but how do you feel about the December 10th date? Do you think they'll actually still hit that? Uh, I've stopped holding my breath at this point. If it comes, it comes. If it gets delayed, I'll have to decide whether or not I want to keep going through this or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, sorry if you heard that noise. I just unplugged my um, mouse because it wasn't working, actually. Uh, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, another Joy-Con drift. Um class action lawsuit has been filed against nintendo now i didn't actually read this full story i don't feel like i necessarily need to but it's about joy-con drift it's still an issue three and a half years later march 2017 to now is about three and a half years um any thoughts on the fact that this is still it is still actually an issue so uh yeah three years is a long time for that what do you uh make of that situation do you have any joy-con drift I barely play it, so I wouldn't notice it if I did. Okay. But something like that is clearly just a manufacturing issue that they've never corrected. Right, because the Joy-Cons are a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. Um. They they just yeah. Uh, that, there is that as well. So yeah, it's those are the one controllers I've ever held in my life where I sort of I pick them up and I'm like, I don't feel like I'm holding something that was made by like a you know massive company. Basically, I feel like I'm holding like a toy. At, at certain points like a like a toy remote control a toy uh toy um remote control car sort of remote thing um they just and i always feel like i'm gonna break them so mm-hmm. there's that as well but yeah that is still an issue wildly three years later i mean we'll see how long it continues to go on do you think they'll get to the four year mark march 2021 i mean if they haven't changed or updated their um manufacturing policy and techniques improved it it's always going to be an issue yeah yeah. So, or the other thing you could do is come out with a redesign of the Joy Cons, which I think you can you desperately need for every single reason. So, mm-hmm. um, there's that as well. And I get it. You know, they're meant to be smaller and they're meant to be for kids, but they're just not very good quality. Hence the whole you know three year Joy Con drift and everything. So, uh, the only other thing I had to talk about was the Game Awards, which we already did. So I will pass it over to you. What do you want to talk about today? Uh, well, first up, uh, video game maker Capcom has mm-hmm. confirmed that a ransomware attack occurred on their servers. Uh, for those people that don't know, ransomware is where a group, a hacker or a group of hackers encrypts part of or all of the data on the servers and then makes them inaccessible to the people that actually own that data until a payment is made. Uh, in this case, the attackers digitally scrambled some of the data on Capcom servers, making them impossible to view, amend, or destroy the files outright. Uh, the group is called Ragnar Locker. Uh, they demanded a payment for their uh, for the hacking. Um, looks like, according to the article, Capcom found a way around their encryption, uh, but they did say that up to 350,000 people could be affected by this hack. Um, where exactly the data comes from, I don't know because I'm not familiar with Capcom enough in the sense that, you know, is it just their username or gamer tag or, you know, whatever, then it gets re, you know, routed back through that or is it something else? Mm-hmm. Uh, but that still kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nasty. Um, what did you say the hacker's name was? Ragnar Lock. Sounds which like is a play on Ragnarok. Yeah, I was gonna say it sounds like something from Norse mythology, from like the Thor world and and all that, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, at uh, 
sucks quite a lot um and i wish everybody well that was affected and we will see where um things go from that there's not too much we can really do or say to that necessarily um what are your thoughts on the situation uh i mean it's one of those things that no data is secure and you're deluding yourself if you think any data is secure the best you can do is just try to minimize any kind of fallout or damage from for when it gets hit the fact that they were able to get around it without having to pay the ransomware is a good sign at least because that means they were up to par of taking care of the issue after it it had become an issue so yeah yeah so we will see how that situation works out uh what else did you want to talk about uh well speaking of uh, bad situations on friday afternoon there is a uh, possible hostage situation at the ubisoft montreal headquarters Police were called in for what was described as a hostage situation in St. Laurent, prompting a large number of resources to be deployed to the area. According to the press release issued on the service de policia de la Ville de Montreal, it was ultimately determined that there was no uh, no threat seemingly confirming media reports due to the incidents that suggest that this had been the result of a hoax. Which, I'm a big fan of jokes and pranks but this is far yeah. far from one of those things mm-hmm. yeah there's actually a thing here i don't know if i don't think it's a thing yet in the uk because of how different police uh, works here but there's actually a thing here in the states called swatting um the swat is uh an intense uh, police unit they get called in when shit really hits the fan and the thing is is that you fake a hostage situation hoping for the police to go in and you know, do harm to whoever's in the building. Mm-hmm. Um, so that looks like this is what it was an attempt at mm-hmm. because there's no legitimate reason to say, oh, this was just a prank. No, you're doing this to hurt somebody. As to the who's and how's and why's, uh, the article doesn't say, and we may never know. Yeah. Um, in terms of like authority in this country, I mean, I'm not one that's, I mean, I've you know, barely travelled this year anyway because of what's happened in the world. Um, but I have seen, we are 11 months into this year, almost 12 months, and I have seen one policeman this year. Uh, now, given the fact that we're supposed to have, like, you know, policemen patrolling and, uh, you know, if you don't have masks in certain places, you're, you're supposed to get fined. That's the whole part of these restrictions, in quotes, that we've got over here. But uh, barely ever see any of them anywhere. Um, even when like cinemas opened back up and I went into town to see those two films, uh, New Mutants and Tenet, I uh, still didn't see any police anywhere and people just kind of wandering around doing what they wanted. Um, so yeah, this, this situation with Ubisoft is a little bit confusing to me because it did seem like that there was a threat and stuff and now it seems like it was a bit of a hoax. But as as long as people are okay at Ubisoft and that at the end of the day is, is what matters, I guess. Um but uh, I, I saw people online joking about, like, oh, Watch Dogs Legion wasn't that bad, was it? Like, uh, people kind of joking about them storming the building for because of the bad games or whatever. Um, still not obviously played Watch Dogs Legion myself, but I should hope to do so soon. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know. It's just a, it's a weird situation. What do you make of it? Uh, honestly, it's just an asshole being an asshole. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the only reason why you would do that is yeah. you're an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, what's uh, what's authority like over there? It varies so much between state and state and city and city. Right. Like if you're in a if you're in a very rural area, um, there's not a lot of people, so obviously there's not a lot of need for police presence. So I mean, you'll see cops doing you know traffic stuff because, I mean, unless you unless you've actually visited the U.S. outside the cities, you don't realize how big the United States is. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of police you see are just like doing like traffic stops. Like, you know, somebody's got a taillight out, which is a ticket violation. Sure. Somebody's got a headlight out, you know, tire might be going flat, something like that. Or somebody's being a, a nutter and driving. They find a nice long stretch of highway. And so they decide to see how fast that car would go. So, you know, somebody gets pulled over for doing, you know, a hundred in a, in a 65 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so most police stuff like that, that I've interacted with has always been on a traffic level. Now, there's always going to be everything because, again, people are assholes. Uh, the job that I'm working now, across the street, some rando dude got stabbed. Um, and so that was a thing for a bit. 
Um, hmm. Obviously, I mean, I mean, from what I understand, you have a gun problem over there, and we have a knife problem over here. So. It's not a gun problem. It's not a knife problem. It's a people problem. Hmm. Well, the, there's there's no control over the weapons in either situation, really. They're inanimate objects. I mean, unless a gun has a malfunction to where it discharges without anybody actually pulling the trigger, you need an actual person behind it to do mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. And that's why that's why I always say it's a people problem. It's not a not a weapon problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um Okay, I think that's that's that on that situation. But again we wish everybody well who is at Ubisoft. Uh what else did you want to talk about today? Uh well unfortunately we this seems to be a category of assholes being assholes. A few clickbait videos were going around the internet uh the day of and the day after the Xbox uh, Series X launched with what appeared to be uh, just a massive amount of smoke coming out of it. Uh, very quickly, you know, the internet sluice went to town and discovered some idiot was just blowing vape smoke on the underside of the console to pull all the smoke up. It's like, oh my god, my Xbox is on fire! And it's just vape smoke. And Microsoft actually had to issue a statement from their Twitter account, from the official Xbox Twitter account. It says, we can't believe we have to say this, but please do not blow vape smoke into your Xbox Series X, oh. which Aaron Greenberg quote tweeted and said, PSA, put down the vape and pick up the controller. The whole new generation always with, you know, a laughing and a face palm. Um, and the only thing I have to say about that is I hope they figured out which consoles those people had and void their warranties because blowing vape smoke into the console is not good. Electronics do not react well to several things, smoke being one of them, even if it's just vape smoke. Mm. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a stupid situation, um, but people do things like that, I suppose, and uh, that is part of the world that we live in. Not the entire world, but it's part of the world that we live in. Um, yeah, I mean, there was some people online that were like, "Okay, this is clearly like fake," and they didn't care and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I I feel like I'm one of the few people that kind of speaks up against clickbait because I sort of know the damaging effects it can have on the industry um, so that's why clickbait just disgusts me so much um, did I say that right? Disgusts? yeah, disgusts me yeah. so much um, yeah, just it. There's, there's so many, I mean I've done I think two different podcasts on clickbait and just why it's terrible um, I mean nobody's necessarily going to die from clickbait but it's damaging to people's jobs potentially and i don't think people necessarily uh some people necessarily realize that which is why i've tried to bring those sort of issues to light um i know it's not the some of the biggest problems in the world but it is a problem in the world and it's something that i can uh speak up against um so it always just does irritate me when i see any form of clickbait really whether it's a lie about a damaged console or like a show being cancelled or some sort of rubbish like that so um there's that as well but uh yeah no i'm with you they should they should void these people's warranty so that if they do actually have their com- consoles damaged and it is real that uh they get the uh punishment for that i suppose yeah because they, they've tried to lie about a issue with a console that is fake the issue is fake so um we'll see how it how it develops so uh anything else you want to add to this uh no i mean uh, we're almost at the end of the year and i think everybody i long since since passed my breaking point for stupid people doing stupid shit i am so over that um i would i could the only good thing i can think of that comes out of that is that when you see how much of the smoke is coming up that just shows you how much air that uh series x is pulling through hmm. thus you know you know, relieving any concern I had with heat issues with machines that powerful. And as someone who has, you know, built computers and worked with electronics, heat is very much an issue. And that was my only real thing is like, are they going to be able to cool that? And given just the sheer volume of air that was moving through on that, um, yeah, they'll be able to keep that fine. Um, outside of that, I really can't comment on the console until I get my hands on one, which hopefully will be sooner rather than later, but you never know anymore. Mm-hmm. How, are you, how are you doing with tracking? Series X uh, I just check, like I said before, because I have so much Amazon credit, the only way I'm going to be able to afford that is through Amazon. So I just have the page. I'll pull it up like, you know, once in the morning before I go to work and then once in the evening after I get home and 
see if it shows up as available and if it does then i'll try to purchase it and if not then you know i'll just wait Mm -hmm. i'm not so in love with the you know the next generation that i'm going to spend a crazy amount of money on it so i'll just see you know i'll get it when i get it yeah yep that's the situation so all right what else did you want to talk about today oh the last the last thing I have to talk about, uh, Dennis Braunvall, who is the Star Wars Battlefront II creative director, is leaving DICE Studios after eight years. Uh, Braunvall's work with DICE began on Battlefield IV before he moved to the first Battlefront team as senior le- lead uh, level designer on the first game. On Bra- Battlefront II, Braunvall served as associate creative director before becoming creative director last year. Uh, He put a quote out on Twitter saying, I still remember when we first got the Star Wars contract and the entire studio meeting was filled with goosebumps and tears of joy. Eight years later, the journey is over for me and I'm moving on from DICE at the end of this month. Thank you all. May the force be with you always. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, he's clearly, you know, in love with the franchise. It's obviously had its ups and downs. Um, But what do you think about uh, moving on from this to go to another company? It's always interesting when a game director, specifically a game director, moves on from a project. Um, like, obviously, you had, I can't remember the guy's name, but the Assassin's Creed Valhalla director left. Uh, the Halo mm-hmm. Infinite director, I think it was the director left that role. And sometimes it's just difficult. And like like you always kind of say, you'll sometimes you'll never know this particular answer. But sometimes it's a case of, okay, did they leave because something is wrong with the game something is wrong with the company or the next game that they're working on uh has got something wrong with that or or whatever there's just a problem or is it simply a case that okay they made this game and they want to move on we do know that in certain situations like with the ubisoft thing we know why that happened uh because all the harassment stuff that happened there and he was wasn't he actually fired from valhalla i can't remember if he left or he was fired i can't remember i don't remember yeah but uh, the director of that left as well um because you got people like amy henning uh as well who just and because of all the star wars stuff that happened with ea she just ended up leaving and uh i think she formed her own game company it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that because uh she's got a past with naughty dog and and that sort of stuff so i've got faith in uh, whatever she's going to be doing next but um yeah it's just always difficult to tell okay do they want to move on because they simply just want to do something else or work on a different game work for a different company or is it because there's something wrong with the company or situation or employees or whatever? Um, and we'll never really know which one it is. But uh, yeah, it's interesting with DICE. Obviously, they had the pretty checkered past with both Battlefront 1 and 2. If you remember with Battlefront 1, the issue was that the game, the full game was basically double price because all of the things that were hidden in the season pass, which kind of should have been included in the main game, was also sixty dollars, so it made it a uh, one hundred and twenty dollar game. And then, of course, we know what happened with Battlefront Two: the whole microtransaction fiasco, removing them, adding them back in for some reason. And uh, I have heard since that game's in a, is in a better place, but sometimes it's too little, too late for for certain games. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's always weird when a director of any level mm. leaves for absolutely no reason. Uh, we've talked about this before a few times on the podcast. Um, when Ikumi Nakamura left her position as creative director for the upcoming game Ghostwire Tokyo. Ah, yes. Yeah. Because she came out with the Bethesda uh, E3, was super bright and bubbly, and just charmed everybody and became yeah. a meme for Having a hot minute. Yeah. yeah. And then just, boom, gone. And we still haven't been really sufficiently told as to why that happened so do we know where she went uh uh, hang on let me pull up her twitter account real quick see it okay uh it looks like she's just doing freelance stuff okay fair enough um as long as she's working she deserves to Mm -hmm. work and stuff she was great but yeah sometimes you just do or don't know uh the situation and uh, sometimes you'll never find it out sometimes it'll get leaked and uh we go from there so Interesting. Yeah, it's been very interesting with the whole, just the whole EA Star Wars roller coaster. I don't know what word to use to describe that situation anymore because, you know, Battlefront 1 and 2 weren't good. Simply put, uh, Jedi Fallen Order was a good return to form. And then mm-hmm. uh, Star Wars Squadron seems to have gone down really well with people. Now, there's probably, what, a Jedi Fallen Order 2 in the works, I would guess. That game was pretty Possibly. well received. Um, probably a Battlefront 3 eventually although i've heard that they've added almost every star wars character 
to that game maybe add the mandalorian and the child or something um Mm -hmm. and uh we shall see but uh yeah dice that's also responsible for um battlefield aren't they Mm -hmm. so uh they'll probably make a new one of them at some point so interesting interesting stuff um all right should we move on from that uh that's all i had so cool all right let's get to the emails feedback questions comments and everything else this week if you would like to send in your thoughts, feelings, questions, comments, concerns about video games or anything related to entertainment talk. Have you got any new games? Do you like them? Dislike them? Have you got any of the new consoles? Or uh, if you're in the UK, are you patiently awaiting to receive your PS5 tomorrow or has it been delayed for some reason? Let us know. Uh, Matthew at entertainmenttalk.org. Twitter e Talk UK. There's a contact page and information in your show notes. Harrison returns. Says, hey lads, with The Last of Us 2 sweeping the nominations, I'm guessing that is very happy. And the same for Robert with Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, yeah, we did already talk about the Game Awards and stuff. Um, I mean, sometimes when, when you get to the Game Awards, it's like, okay, this thing's probably going to get nominated, this thing and this thing. And there's maybe like a few gaps. Like, uh, there was a bit of surprise about maybe Doom Eternal. Um, and maybe some other nominations, and I was hoping that, like, Iron Man would get nominated for some things, but we could pretty much have guessed that, okay, Animal Crossing, Ghost, Last of Us, we're, we're going to be sort of like the big three, Hades as well. Um, so I don't think we're surprised necessarily, but, uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy with, um, what Last of Us has got. I just, uh, I kind of hope for both of us, for both me and you, that Ghost wins some things, and Last of Us 2 wins some things, because there's certainly enough of there for both of them to win, I think. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple categories for both games. I don't mm-hmm. really see how they fit. Um, and my only real surprise is Hades, just because I literally have never heard of that game before. Okay. All right. Um, but, uh, yeah, you happy with what Ghost got in the end? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, we'll see how who actually wins what, but, you know, I'm happy that it's getting the recognition it deserves. Definitely. Yeah, and they can um, share some awards. So, uh, Peter says, uh, any big missed um, games for Game of the Year? No Jedi Fallen Order. That was a pretty big miss, I think, for uh, Game of the Year, maybe. I don't think it was technically capable for Game of the Year. Uh, or I mean, I know it got one of the nominations, but I honestly don't remember when that game came out. So, Okay, I think it was like literally two days before the nominations last year like it it just came out okay. as as, yeah. as yeah i could have swore it was a 2019 game but that would make more sense like it came out like because we know cyberpunk will be in next year's for yeah. a lot of categories unless the game yeah. completely bombs mm. well the game's not um, out yet so yeah it won't be this year differently yeah so, yeah um what was the other game that someone said so, oh, yeah, someone said about um I think it was demon souls if that gets pushed to next but then the thing is like if if spider-man got nominated and that's a launch game surely demon souls was eligible because they literally came is... out on the same day so i don't know i don't know maybe because it was a remake well but final fantasy 7 is in there and resident evil 3 well, yeah but te- i mean it's a remake but it's a different completely different style of game i mean it's not mm. Just a copy paste or an upres of the literal same game. I mean, hell, technically, Final Fantasy VII is only like the first third of that game. Yeah, it's not actually the whole thing, is it? So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Fallen Order to me is a, a little bit of a miss. Um, I mean, honestly, to me, I just didn't expect to see Iron Man anywhere, and I was hoping that it would get uh, something. So, I, I can't think of any big games that have missed out necessarily. Uh, I know there were things like Ori that weren't Game of the Year nominated, but they those some of those games that missed out on Game of the Year were nominated for other things, so they didn't really miss necessarily. Uh, they just didn't get nominated for that particular thing. So, um, not, no other games for me really come to mind. Uh, Jared says Matt has been talking a lot about not accepting bad AAA video games. What qualifies as a bad AAA AAA video game, and how does Robert feel about that? Um, I want to go to the your part of that answer for that question um what do you think about like bad triple a video games and not accepting them and what do you think kind of qualifies as a like bad triple a video game it would have to be either one of two things either it was functionally not playable like we saw with the launch for fallout 76 
or just so unenjoyable that people put it down right away. And then the second one's a lot more subjective because it is a personal choice. Sure. Like but the first one I think we can all something. agree on. If it's like functionally not playable, like on a repeated level, then that would be good. And the, unfortunately, the only way to accept that is to vote with your wallet. To, you know, return the game impossible, you know, give it a bad review. If it's honestly broken, don't just like you know, spam bad reviews for the sake of spamming bad reviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, to me, it's basically... Uh, I mean, I could give you multiple examples. The Avengers, Fallout 76, Crackdown 3, those are some... Uh, Anthem is... that Those are some big AAA games that, that kind of come to mind. To me, it's where you know that... Whoever the AAA company may be that's that's involved with developing it, you know that they have got the money and the capabilities to have done a better job. And if they haven't done that better job, that's in a bad AAA video game to me. But it, it's things like like kind of like what you said as well, like functionality for the games, like if certain quests are broken or um, like with the the Thor glitch on Avengers, like if you're flying through the level as Thor and it literally like kind of glitches you through the wall and throws you out the level and you can't get back and it abandons the mission, that's pretty terrible. See, there's a, there's a certain level to bugs and glitches, some of which were like, okay, I threw this enemy through a wall or something, they died, it didn't break the game, it's kind of a little bit funny maybe, and I can keep continuing with the game. Whereas like, okay, if you get flung out of the map, and your the game doesn't let you come back in, and the game makes you abandon the mission that you're in because the game senses that you're not in the level because it threw you out of it. That's that's a that's a terrible example of a you know a bad glitch. So it it's just differences like that to me. Like if there's pretty funny glitches that you can you can go and explore and have some fun with and that sort of thing. But when something is kind of broken or just just not up to that really top tier, because to me it doesn't really get any higher than triple A video games. That's where you're talking about. You know, the, all, all the big uh, first-party studios and some of the third-party studios and, and those sorts of things. Um, and just just certain companies that you <clears throat> expect more from and when they don't deliver, basically. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's certain possible different examples. Like, when I look at something like Crackdown 3, it had a few glitches and issues that I heard of. I don't remember hearing about too much that was game-breaking, but one of the things I heard about that game... Now, I didn't play it for myself, so I can't speak from personal experience, but it was just, like, really, really bland, really, really boring. It was in development for ages. It's a first-party Microsoft game. You just you expect more from a situation like that as to, okay, for if the game doesn't have as many broken glitches or bugs and stuff, but it's just a really, really bland experience, you need that to be notched up a few levels as well. And uh, I just think that if a video game that's AAA doesn't live up to those sorts of standards, then... Uh, you shouldn't accept it. So, uh, any additional thoughts on that? I did play a good chunk of Crackdown 3. Uh, it wasn't so much that it was bland. Um, it's just that it didn't really draw you. It didn't really draw me in, at least. Mm. And I was playing as Terry didn't Crews. Anything, didn't do anything special, I guess. Yeah, and if you're playing as a, a cartoony version of Terry Crews, who's already a cartoony version of a normal human being, <laughs> and it still doesn't draw you in then that's that's an issue so mm -hmm. yeah so uh but jared if you're curious i have done there was two yeah two podcasts on uh let's stop accepting bad triple a video games and uh brought up various different examples i don't think fallout 76 was out at that point i can't quite remember to be honest but i did bring up anthem and uh crackdown 3 i think fallout 76 was out i can't remember but go and look on the website for that you should be able to find that as well and, yeah, and uh, Anthem is part of the Game Pass Ultimate now with EA Play kind of getting absorbed into that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, when is that revamp for that game supposed to happen? Who knows? I mean, that's I guess that's one of those things that it could be a decade before they really get that fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, and the thing that really, I know I've spoken a lot about the Avengers game, but the thing that really kind of is weird about that is... Uh, first of all, the player base has dropped. They've lost money. The game's terrible. Obviously, that last part is is subjective. You might have fun with the game. That's cool. Whatever. Um, they just keep putting out like, okay, this update's happening and that update's update's happening. And look at the weekly. I think it's called weekly war table or something. 
Um, <clears throat> you're not going to fix a game if you just keep adding things to it. You've got to fix what you have in the game. And until the game just does that or revamps its entire system, uh, it's uh, not going to pick up any more pace. So mm-hmm. um, there we go. But uh, that's the end of this episode for Random Gaming Talk. Thank you very much for listening. Hopefully next week I'll have some impressions of uh, Watch Dogs Legion and of the Super Mario, I think it's 3D All-Stars Collection. I'll have the proper name for the game when I come back next week. Uh, if I receive it by next week, that is. Hopefully I should do so. Um, so, yeah, what are you going to be playing kind of next? Uh, I'm still playing through uh, Valhalla. I don't really have anything that's on my must-play list until uh, Cyberpunk either gets shipped or delayed. But that's still, you know, a couple weeks. That's actually three weeks away almost. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I might go through the Game Pass, see if there's something uh, that jumps out at me that I don't recognize. Or Cool. Cool. Um, all right, so that's what we're going to be doing within the next couple of weeks, uh, or next week, I guess. If you want to find everything else that we do, it is on entertainmenttalk.org. Uh, sports is back this week, or Manchester United are back this weekend. The stupid, long international break is, is over. Uh, Dan James scored a great goal, by the way, today for Wales, which was great. Uh, but Manchester United returned this weekend against West Brom, and if we don't win that, there will really be some problems because West Brom are terrible. But uh, look out for the podcast. That should be Saturday because it's going to be a Saturday Saturday night game, so the United cast will be back. Uh, but you can find everything else that we do on entertainmenttalk.org, TV, video games, films, and Manchester United as well. If you like what you've heard today and you want to hear more and support more of what we do, that would be brilliant. Uh, you can support us over on Patreon, the $1 and $3 level tiers. That's for ad free podcast and review options. Uh, you can use word of mouth, uh, let people know um, about the website, the iTunes feed, social media, same thing, Facebook, Twitter, and different Facebook groups. Uh, for other people involved with entertainment talk and everything, uh, you can check out David, of course. He runs geektown.co.uk. That is for your up-to-date, reliable TV and film news. Geek Town Radios are Geek Town Radio episodes are on Tuesdays weekly. You can go and check out this week's episode, and uh, of course, search for Geek Town on podcast services or go over to geektown.co.uk. Bex is streaming daily at the moment over on Twitch. If you search for Trista Bytes, Trista B Y T E S, go and follow her over there. Subscribe to her and check out what she's doing over there. Uh, I'm streaming on Twitch more regularly than what I've ever done before. Uh, a mixture of Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. And the PES 2020 Master League. And eventually different games as well. So look out for that. If you search for eTalk UK on Twitch. Go and follow me over there. And come and say hi and all that sort of stuff. Um, Yeah I think that's pretty much everything. You can. Yeah that's pretty much everything. Uh, And of course also look out for Let's Play Sunday episodes as well. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh I forgot that my mouse wasn't plugged in. Got to use the other one. (laughs) 